And welcome again to Overtime, brought to you by King's Cast at www.kingscast.net. I'm Keith Kornelik. And I'm Chris Kalasiewski. That's right, King Sands. We're back with the second part of our Hockey Fest 2011 show. And we're going to have interviews uh, here with Anze Kopitar, Dustin Brown, Justin Williams, uh, and many more. So check it out and enjoy. July 1st, uh, we got a phone call from them. And um, no, um, can I explain us a little bit uh, what was the situation to, uh, with, with them at that time now, telling me that... Uh, no, I was on their list. Now, number one was uh, was Brad, Brad Richard, and I was the second guy. And uh, so, uh, no, that's what happened. July first, you know, you get uh, phone calls from different teams, and after that, you decide you make your list. And uh, and uh, no, when uh, uh, Brad uh, signed in uh, New York, you know, uh, LA came back. Uh, no, even no, uh, the announcement was. On TV, not even a minute after uh, the Kings called us right away, so uh, we knew that uh, they were really serious about uh, about signing me. And uh, I have to say, now just just before uh, last year, you know, when I and when I, I left my uh, no trade clause uh, to go to Tampa, you know, uh, I know that the Kings were uh, uh, was really interested in uh, in myself too. No, that 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 might be the the, the question mark, you know, that. Uh, um, that it's something that uh, now uh, I'll uh, I'll get used to it, you know, when the season go on, you know, and um, but if if you look at uh, the travel that we had last year in, in Tampa Bay, you know, uh, was 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 uh, a lot of traveling, and, uh, and no, uh, so uh, I was talking to uh, some uh, people here and and uh, with working with the Kings that. Uh, what uh, the Kings did as, as travel last year in Tampa Bay, did, what we did last year in Tampa Bay was almost uh, similar to uh, to uh, to it. So um, it's it's stuff that will take time. Now I know that uh, with with time change, that might be the the, the hardest thing to adjust. And uh, uh, but at the same time, now I'm here for two years, so I have no choice. So. Um, just more of the same. I mean, just being around the guys, I think, for the last uh, four or five days, just keep things loose around the dressing room. Um, it's hard to tell right now because um, I haven't played with them, but, you know, guys that stick up for each other and, and really like a family, um, you know, kind of go to, go to bat for each other, stick up for each other, have fun together, and, and I think that's usually what, what teams need to have success. I've always come into seasons with my own expectations, and... Um, I don't hold any grudges about anything. I, I think um, they want to go in a different direction, and I'm happy to be here. So I'm not looking to, to get any revenge of, of any sorts. But um, the expectations that I put on myself, I think, is the biggest thing. Uh, I hope so. Um, on paper, yes, I think so. Um, I haven't been around on the ice very much um, yet. Uh, to, to really say that, but I mean, we have a good team on paper. There's a, obviously a long road that we have to go through together um, to get there. We need some luck, um, obviously staying healthy, but on paper, this is uh, one of the better teams that I've been a part of. Just get back to uh, to playing the, the hockey that I'm capable of. Last year, I think, with the injury to my hand, um, made it hard to do things with, with face-off wise. Um, my shot wasn't great so I didn't score as many goals as I would have wanted to but um, just get back to that I, I think after um, you know, a, a tough year I think and a, a tough summer I just looking forward to getting back on the ice and, and playing hockey again. I'm healthy now. I, I, it happened early in the season last year so it was a bit of a nagging thing and like you said it was um, just kind of a wear and tear thing, so there wasn't much that I could do about that. But I had surgery in, in May and, and feel healthy now. I'm looking forward to, to getting back and playing some good hockey. I think um, me being healthy is going to be the biggest thing to, to get back there. And, and like I said, just another lot. Um, having playing with one one hand all year is tough, and um, didn't want didn't really play at the the level that I wanted just just because of it. But um, not having a letter is going to help me just focus on hockey and. Um, Philly's a, a tough town to play in media-wise and um, there's a, a lot of different things that you have to deal with when, when you're a captain or assistant captain. I'm looking forward just to go another rank and play in hockey. I know that Penner trained hard during the summer. Um, how did he do? How's he looking now? Dustin Penner is a, a much better looking person today than what he was at the end of the year. <laughs> he has worked very hard. 
He came into the Toyota Center probably averaging three times a week, put in a lot of work. I personally went over to watch him work out at, our, at a, uh, a soccer field where the group was over there that one day with their sprints and their lunges, uh, pulling in a, a steel sled, much similar to what an NFL player kind of training. Uh, and he does look great. He looks strong. He's ready. I had a conversation with him recently, and he's very excited. Can you share that? No. That's uh, from <laughs> like uh, that is highly classified. Yeah. We'll find out next week. Yeah, you will exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, you want? No. You rather not? Well, it's ten pounds less than what uh, it was when I talked to him. When was that? July. Yeah. And what it was when he talked to you in July? I. He just said lost ten pounds. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, obviously it's uh, it's great to have the support from your coach there, but uh, you know at the same time, if you know like like any position, not just goaltending, if you can't produce, if you don't play well, you're not going to be there for long. So uh, you know obviously it's good to have that that support, but you know at the same time, I, there's there's a lot of work to do, and uh, you know I think it's uh, the start to, to a long year, hopefully, and uh, you know we'll see how it goes. Um, you know it is what it is. It's it's something that I. I hate to get involved in, you know, it's, you know, it is what it is, so uh, I know everybody on the team's uh, looking forward for Tim coming back, and, you know, I don't think they'll be, uh, well, it's not like I think he won't be here, I think he'll be here at some point, so, you know, so we'll see one. You know, at some point you got to get over it and you got to start thinking about what, what what's next, so, uh, you know, somewhere in the, during the summer there, you, you kind of, you, you stop uh, analyzing what went wrong and, you know, what you could have done better, and, you know, it's when you start focusing on this year and, and, and getting prepared and ready to go. Yeah, no, I think we definitely, without a doubt, have the talent. I know we're, uh, as a group of players, we're very close and everybody, uh, you know, we, we have a great chemistry in the locker room, so I don't think there's a doubt in my mind that whether we can or can't do that. It's obvious after every season, you all have a chance to get a lot of free agents. They're out there. Uh, part of being a winning team is the chemistry. What's the chemistry that you saw in Simone and Mike that would, other than their stats? I mean, you hit the nail right on the head. I mean, there's, there's no question that free agency and, uh, you know, was fraught with pitfalls. And again, we talked about that before. Where I remember like three or four years ago, we went out and got five or six free agents and we thought it was great. It's like, oh, this ain't the way to go. Trust me. Um, usually, like I said, the ideal thing with free agency is, is not only the quality of the player, but the fit. But hopefully, or not hopefully, but to get it right, your core of your room that has to take over that leadership group has to be quality and generally homegrown people. Yep. Yeah, I agree with them. No, I got a lot of confidence in this team. What about the one guy that's not here? I think he'll be here. Yeah. I think everybody's planning on starting the year with him. Nobody really sees us not having him in the lineup at the start of the year. But, you know, obviously it's something that I'm definitely not keeping tabs on daily just because, you know, it's none of my business what he, you know, what, what goes on there anyways. It's just it's going to have the confidence that when the deal does get done, he'll come in and it'll be, uh, you know, the same piece that he's been for our team for the last three years. Have you talked to him? Yeah, no, I talked to him, but I haven't talked to him about the contract or anything like that. There's no point. He's probably hearing that conversation all day. So, you know, I'll give him a little break, just shoot the breeze. Uh, surprise, you know. I think, uh, you know, just like anything, it's, you know, obviously, first off, you get excited for, uh, you know, for a guy like that who you played against before and he's a real good player and you know, he's going to add a, add a new dimension to our team. But then again, though, too, you, you know, you feel sad and because, you know, Simmer Simmer was a big part of our team. He's a great player. He's only going to get better. And, uh, you know, so it's tough to lose a friend and a, and a good player like that. And the guy's been a big part of our team. But at the same time, I think uh, Mike Richards is a player that doesn't come around too often. And so, uh, you know, if he's available and signed for nine years, I think he's going to be a central part of this team for for a long time. And uh, I think you got to give you got to give up something to get something, and that's uh, that's what they did in the case with uh, Simmer and uh, and Shannon going the other way. You know, it's just like anything; you got to win to get results. We got to. We knew coming into this year if they made the moves or not. That obviously you got to got to start making strides in the right way. You know, to keep your team together, and nobody's going to keep a team together that just. You know, it was one and done in the playoffs, or it was kind of battling to stay in the playoffs. You got to win games if you want to stay together, keep your core together. So it's no more pressure than we thought. I think it's just uh, it's a nice reward. It's finally uh, it's nice to have a summer where all of a sudden you know we're going after these guys, we're getting our team better. That shows that management has a lot of confidence in us, saying, "All right, well, you guys have done your part to get better and to grow as a team. Now we're going to add the pieces that I think 
you know, that they're going to make us, you know, put us over the top. Um, when you guys are so much in Berlin, what are you expecting from there? Two points on that thing. <laughs> Well, I think familiarity is is pretty underrated. When you get, you know, guys you played with, and um, especially coaches that you're familiar with, I think you're able to start the season a little bit ahead of what you would normally be, and um, I think that'll definitely be the case for us. I, I think uh, I, th I think we can actually, you know, do everything. We should we should be able to make it ever all the way. I don't think I've been on a team where, um, you know, even when I won the cup in '06, our team wasn't. Uh, expected to do this. I think expectations here should be extremely high for this team and this talent and um, you know how far we've come so you know I think a successful season um, you know the way it used to be is, is the first round make the playoffs second round you know we should be looking to win it all. You, you think about it and you, you learn from it. I think everybody on this team, nothing's nothing's ever the same. You know, as long as you play in this league, you say, "Yeah, well, I've been there, I've done that." I haven't quite done that, but um, we're going to learn from that, and that's going to be we're going to be a better team because of it, um, because we're going to be able to know how to deal with it. And, um, you know, we've we've we've. I know last year we had one of the youngest teams. I know we'll have a young team again this year, but we've got a young and experienced team. I think the interchangeable parts are, are, are pretty good up front, and it's exciting to know that not the team, no teams are going to be able to key on one line. And um, you know, when you can have that balanced scoring like we anticipate having here, not only from the top two lines, but you know, certainly our bottom two as well. Um, you know, you're you're going to have a good time. You're going to be a, a thorn in the opponent's side most of the nights. All right, Kings fans, we'll be right back at you right around preseason to do a little preview of the Los Angeles Kings. Hopefully, Drew Doughty will be a king here in the next uh, you know, few days or so. So stay tuned. I'm Keith Kornelik. And I'm Chris Kalaszewski. Thanks for watching Overtime. Bye, Kings cast.